There's two ways primarily to view perspective. There's two essentially opposite perspectives. One is the world's perspective. The world's perspective. The other is the word's perspective. Two different words. W-O-R-L-D, the world, and then you have the word, W-O-R-D. These are two opposite ways of viewing everything. Your perspective is important when dealing with your purpose, and I'm going to get to exactly why. First of all, let's look at a couple differences between the world's way of viewing things and the word's way of viewing things. First of all, John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And the world, W-O-R-L-D, the world loves darkness. Here's what the world says. John 3, 19 through 20. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. They love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Here we go. Verse 20. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. The world's way of viewing things is they love darkness. They love doing evil, and if they're doing evil, they hate the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest their deeds should be reproved. One of the reasons why the world hates, listen to this, or rather loves darkness, why the world loves darkness, is because their deeds are evil. What they do is wrong. If you view things through the world's way of viewing things, you're going to eventually love darkness. You're going to love evil. You're not going to love the things of God. You're going to love the things that are absent from God. If your perspective is a worldly perspective, you're going to love darkness, you're going to love evil, and you're not going to love the light. You're not going to go to the light. And here's why. Because... Neither cometh to the light, lest, that's because, because his deeds are evil and they are to be reproved. So deeds are evil, they're going to be reproved. They look at things differently than we look at things through the word. One commentator said this, just as natural light shows up what is otherwise unseen, so Christ the light exposes people's deeds as evil. That is exactly what happens. The deeds that the world does are evil, and they know it, and we know it. And what Christ the light does, it exposes those evil deeds. And therefore, verse 20, their deeds are reproved. So they hate going towards the light. They do not like that. The world loves the darkness because it's a safe place. And when you are in a dark place, you can hide from things because you don't have to see it. And you know what? Other people can't see it either. This is a worldly perspective. A worldly perspective. The world, the world does not love Christians. Okay? This is just a pretty standard. The world does not love Christians. Matter of fact, I don't think they've ever really loved Christians. There has been small groups of people who love and embrace Christianity. But for all intents and purposes, the world does not like Christians or nothing that even ties them back to a Judeo-Christian type of faith. First century, they don't like that. Matter of fact, back in in the time when Hitler was, was running the show over in Germany, he was literally trying to scrub out, literally trying to erase all of the Jews. That was his plan to get rid of them all. Now we have a similar problem. We don't have anti-Semitism as bad, but we have what's called anti-Zionism, which comes from uh, replacement theology, which we won't get into all that. But basically, here's what they're trying to do. They're not trying to scrub out all the Jews. They're trying to scrub out all the history of the Jews. So if they can't get rid of the people, get rid of their history. And by virtue of getting rid of their history, we get rid of the people. That's the anti-Zionist view. The world doesn't like Christians. If anything, we get rid of this type of, this type of thinking. I would say that the agnostics and the atheists and the, the I'm going to come up with a new word, the, the ignoramuses, that's a word, right? They, they don't want anything to do with Christianity because Christianity poses a threat because it's a light revealer. 
It's a deed reprover. Th- that, that is one reason why people don't want to come to Christianity. Because they're afraid of what Christianity imposes on them. And that is reproof. The world looks at Christianity in a negative slant. That is how, that is how the world sees it. The world sees it. And it will continually see it that way. It will continually see it that way. The world does not love Christians. Let's jump back to John 7, 7. The world cannot hate you. It hateth me because I testify of it that, that the works thereof are evil. Okay, so he's saying that God, Jesus, is testifying uh, of, he's testifying that what the world does is evil. So can you imagine why nobody wants anything to do? Why is the name Jesus so offensive? The name Jesus is so offensive is because Jesus is a reprover to the world. To us, he's a redeemer. But that is perspective. To the world's viewpoint, to the world, in the world's perspective, they look at Jesus Christ as reprover. We look at him as redeemer. He came to save us from our sin. To the world, he came to condemn them of their sin. Two different perspectives. Perspective matters. And it matters when we talk about purpose. It matters when we talk about purpose. Now, let's look at John 15. It says this, If the world hate you, ye know that it hateth me before it hateth you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. Now, this is really telling. Ready? Here. But because you're not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. So here's what he's saying. He's saying the reason the world hates you is because you're not like them. Because you view things differently than the world views things, they're going to hate you. Now, if you were of the world, the world would love you. And you all have experienced this. Anybody who has practiced separation from their past and has said, you know what, I'm not going to walk where, 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 the, where the wicked people walk, and I'm not going to do the things the wicked people do. Anybody who has separated yourself from them, know that you have been mocked and scoffed at. You know that. They don't see things the way we see things. We look at this, we look at this and say, if we were like them, they would love us. But we're not like them, we're like Christ. We try to be like Christ. So therefore, there is a rejection. It's perspective. And perspective is important when you're dealing with purpose. No matter what we do, the world will reject us. We are, in a sense, monotheistic in our, in our, in our thinking. That means we, we believe in one God. Now, that one God is Jesus, and he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by him. And we know that, and we embrace that. But to the world, they don't see it that way. They exercise something called idolatrous worship, essentially. And they're worshiping many gods. And this is a different Perspective, And here is why in Exodus chapter 20, verse 3, the first commandment starts out with this. Thou shall have no other gods before me. The reason for that is that he, God knew that the world sees things differently than the word sees things. Two different perspectives. One perspective is let's worship everything or anything. And that's the world's perspective. The word's perspective is monotheistic in basis, and they're saying, God, the the Bible is saying, let's worship one God, and his name is Jesus. And so it's different than the world, and this is important when we talk about perspective. If you're viewing things with the world's, the W-O-R-L-D-S, the world's viewpoint and perspective, it's going to be different than the word's perspective. This is very, very important. And if you have a word-like perspective, you're going to have a word-like result. If you're going to have a world-like perspective, you will have a world-like result. You end up in the place that reflects your perspective. And this is always true. You always end up in the place that reflects your perspective. I mentioned a while back in another series, you will become like the majority of your influence. You'll become like the majority of your influence. If, that's why they say that birds of the same feather 
flock together. Because the majority of ducks fly with ducks. And the majority of the world hangs with the world and does world-like things. And the majority of the word-like people hang with people who embrace the word and do word-like things. This is really important. Okay, let's look at a... Now, we looked at how the world does not love Christians. It does not love God. It does not love Christians. Uh, The word-like perspective says this. Here's what the word says. Here's what the word says. Love not the world. This is what the word says. The W-O-R-D says don't love the world. The W-O-R-L-D. Don't love the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, not of God, not of the Word. Think about it that way. But of the world. So when, when we think about, about the difference between the world and the Word, this is important. The Word says don't love the world, and the world says don't love the Word. So how you view things, your perspective is important when you talk about your purpose. It's very important when you talk about your purpose. Okay. Here's what, here's what the word says. The word says, and be not conformed to the world. Right? That's what the word says. The world says, do not be conformed to the word. Two different sides of it. And, and there is a polarity in here that repels to the ends of the universe. They do not like each other. They do not like each other. There are two different purposes, there are motives, there's agendas, there's just absolute vast space in between this. You cannot get any further from from each side. The word does not love the world in the sense of the things that are in the world, as we saw in uh, in 1 John chapter 2. The world does not love the word or anything that pertains to the word. It wants to absolutely get rid of everything, any semblance, any residue of of anything that's of God. And they will do everything that's anti-God. So you have one that's anti-God and you have the other one that's, that's, that's everything for God. You have the world's perspective and the word's perspective. And here was where it boils down. Here's where it boils down. The world says this. Love the word, the world. The world says love the world, hate God, because he's a reprover. And the word says to love, to love the word, to love the word, to love God, because he's a redeemer. Two different sides of things. Two different perspectives. If you view things from a world's perspective, you will end up with a world-like result. And if you view things through a word-like perspective, you'll end up with a word-like result. And this is important to finding your purpose. Because what it boils down to is the difference between everything that's earthly and everything that's eternal. The earthly only produces temporal things which result in no purpose. The eternal, the eternal side of things produces everything that is forever, anything that's infinite, and it has a purpose. And this is one reason why the world wanders around looking for things in areas they're not going to find it. They can't find it there, but there's no purpose because it's temporal. And it's all based upon the perspective of the world. The world produces world-like things. And the word produces word-like things, word results. An earthly perspective is temporal, and an eternal perspective is always looking forward to the future. 